Hello everyone, welcome to my third video about hyperbola. This is Rex Gavin reminding you again that I am not in a quiet room so there might be noises sometimes other than my voice. Okay, so in this video I will be discussing to you the standard equation of hyperbola. The two equations on the screen are the equation of the hyperbolas in standard form. One is a hyperbola with horizontal transverse axis and the other as the vertical transverse axis. Notice that the equations are very much similar with the standard equation of the ellipse, only that we have this subtraction in hyperbola while we had addition in ellipse. Okay. Now to identify the position of the transverse axis, first is you need to learn how to identify a square. Okay. So, notice that there are two denominators here on the left expression. One is a squared and the other is b squared. a squared, guys, you have to remember that it is always the denominator of the positive term. Okay, again, it is always the denominator of the positive term. Because in hyperbola, one, one of the terms on the left expression is positive and the other is negative. Okay, of course, this one is negative because this is after this minus symbol, okay? Now, if this is a squared, just look at the variable in the numerator, okay? In this, in this expression, x is the variable in the numerator, and all you have to do is to recall the position of the x-axis. Remember, it is horizontal. Thus, the first equation on the screen represents a hyperbola with horizontal transverse axis. Of course, it follows that the conjugate axis is vertical since these axes are always perpendicular to each other. In the second equation on the screen, this is the positive term again, so obviously the denominator is a squared. Look at the numerator. Okay, so it has a y variable. And since it is a y variable, then remember the position of the y axis. That is vertical, which means the second equation on the screen represents the equation of the hyperbola with vertical transverse axis. Again, of course, it follows that the conjugate axis is horizontal since they are always perpendicular to each other. It is also essential for you to know that the center of the hyperbola is the same as the ellipse and circle, which is HK. The transverse axis of the hyperbola measures 2A. The conjugate axis measures 2B. The distance between foci is 2C. The distance between the rectrices is 2D. And the length of each latus rectum is equal to the 2B squared all over A. Now, I actually prepared two examples that might help you understand these things better. I hope so. Example number one, identify the position of the transverse axis and the conjugate axis of the hyperbola. Find the center and the values of A, B, C, D and the length of each lattice rectum or the length of the lattice rectum. Given the equation of the hyperbola on the screen, you have y minus 4 quantity squared all over 9 minus x plus 7 quantity squared all over 16 equals 1. So first, to identify the position of the transverse axis, you need to find a squared first. Okay, as I said, a squared is always the denominator of the positive term. In the equation given, in the equation given, this is our positive term. Thus, 9 is our a squared. And the numerator has a y variable, which means we have to remember the position of the y-axis that is vertical. So we can, we can then say that this equation on the screen represents a hyperbola with vertical transverse axis, and it follows that the conjugate axis is horizontal, since again, they are always perpendicular to each other. The center of the hyperbola is negative 7 and 4. You have to be careful, okay? So you have to take h first and then followed by k. This is our x minus h and this is our y minus k. 
So I have to get negative 7 first, and then after that, I have to take positive 4. To solve for the value of A, since that is our next goal, center than A, B, C, D, and the length of the lattice rectum, we have to get the value of A squared, or we will be using the value of A squared, which is 9. Taking square roots on both sides will give you 3 as the value of A. B squared is 16. So, B is equal to 4. To solve for C, you have to use C equals the square root of A squared plus the B squared. You will then have C equals the square root of 9 plus 16, or that is C equals the square root of 25, which will give you C equals 5. D is equal to A squared all over C, or D equals 9 over 5, 1.8 in decimal form. Lattice rectum is equal to 2B squared all over A. That means you have 2 times 16 all over 3. That's 32 over 3 or approximately 10.67. If you may recall, the methods in solving A, B, C, D and the lattice rectum of the ellipse, they are almost similar with this, except for C. So that means all you have to do is to change the formula in C instead of the square root of a squared minus b squared in ellipse, you will now use the square root of a squared plus the b squared in hyperbola. Example number two, we have the same goal. Find the position of the, of the transverse axis and the conjugate axis, then get the center and the values of a, b, c, d and the length of the lattice rectum. Given this different equation of the hyperbola, x plus 3 quantity squared all over 16 minus y minus 5 quantity squared all over 9 equals 1. First is to identify a squared. Again, same way. This is our positive term on the left expression of this equation. So, 16 is our a squared. And notice that the variable in the numerator is x. So, we have to recall the position of the x-axis, which is horizontal. By then, we can say this equation on the screen represents the hyperbola with horizontal transverse axis. And, of course, it will follow that the conjugate axis is vertical to make them perpendicular to each other. The center of this hyperbola is negative 3 and 5. Using a squared equals, equals 16, we can get the value of a by taking square roots on both sides. That should be 4. b squared is equal to 9, so b is equal to 3. Again, this is the different formula among all from ellipse. c is equal to the square root of a squared plus the b squared. So this time, you have the square root of 16 plus 9. This will give you square root of 25 or c equals 5. D is equal to A squared all over C, which means you have 16 over 5, or that is 3.2 in decimal form. The lattice rectum is equal to 2B squared all over A, which means you have 2 times 9 all over 4, or 9 over 2 in reduced form. So that's equal to 4.5 in decimal form. So that's it for now. Goodbye.